Hey, what's up, guys? I want to uh, uh, discuss with you what's happening with Uniswap. The liquidity mining program that was started in uh, September is uh, coming to an end. Uh, is actually scheduled to uh, to finish on uh, November 17th at 12 a.m. Uh, UTC. So it's about to. Uh, uh, so this is about to happen. And as you can see from Uniswap.info, a lot of liquidity already kind of left Uniswap. We're talking about 40% of the liquidity. There used to be about three billion, and now it's 1.7. So we can say maybe 1.2, 1.3 billion dollars of we kind of left uh, the platform. I want to discuss we, uh, this with you and, and also kind of do a few considerations of the impact that the liquidity uh, mining had on the yields and whether, you know, how you can think about your decision making, whether to stay, whether to reallocate the capital on different pools and how to go about that. So first, I found this tweet this morning that was kind of talking about uh, where the capital that is leaving Uniswap, where, where is it going? And uh, for sure, uh, you know, some of it is going to SushiSwap. Consider that we were there at maybe 250, 250, 300 million before um, before yesterday, and now it's about uh, 600 million. So let's say 250 more. But I would say that the majority of the capital that left, as as I mentioned, and we we're talking maybe 1.2, 1.3 billion dollars, is kind of still. Uh, left on the sidelines and, and really looking for an, a possible location once, um, you know, things will be more clear uh, when it comes to whether the program will be continued or what's going to happen with Uniswap. And um, so I wanted to really uh, do a few considerations with you in terms of the, uh, the liquidity mining in the first place. And so if you go on Uniswap ROI and you on the pool section, you look at the high liquidity pool, you find basically the pools which uh, currently have a, um, an incentive so we're talking Ethereum, WBTC, USDC, USDT, and DAI. And uh, here on a on a uh, projection over the next 30 days, you can see how much you know how much uh, the pool is expected to return. For example, you Ethereum USDC, we're talking 2.15 percent over 30 days, which is about 26 percent per year. And the majority of it is, is actually coming from the uni farming. So 0.12% is coming from the fees and 2.03% is, is expected to, to be coming from farming of uni, which is the component which uh, right now is, is, uh, is about to end. And uh, if you click on it, you're going to be able to see other stats and the evolution of the value, but you're also going to be able to see the evolution of the yield uh, over time, right? And this is tracking from July to, to today. So I wanted to, to use this uh, in terms of giving you a, an analysis of, of what happened with the liquidity mining. So I prepared a few charts for you guys. So first off, I mean, let's let's examine this chart for a second. So this is the one week return uh, over, you know, of, of the pool Ethereum USDC over a few months. Uh, we're talking from July to today. And essentially, uh, what, there are a couple of lines. One, the blue line is the projected. So Uniswap ROI as a site is giving you a projection. Uh, but I wanted to uh, also, um, you know, compare it with the actual. And originally, this chart was made was meant to uh, to give you a, a back testing of, of the accuracy of, of my projection. But we can actually use it here to do a few considerations. So let's consider only the actual one week return of the Ethereum USDC pool over time. And um, you know, you can see that basically. Um, you know, since well, if we if we overlay uh, the point at which the uh, use of liquidity mining program was started, which is about the end of uh, you know September, the yield of the pool dramatically went down, and this is considered this is the yield only attributable to the fees, right? So it used to be you know between one and two percent per week, and then now is is you know below uh, 0.5 percent per week, and so basically you know if you, if you look at the numbers. On this side, uh, you know, so post liquidity mining, we also need to add the, you know, the yield from farming the uni. Uh, and so basically when, you know, all considered, we, we came from, you know, if we do an average here is probably around the 1% per week. So which was, you know, 40, 50% APY if you were to provide liquidity on the Ethereum USDC pool, say in, uh, you know, in July, in, in, uh, in a good part of August and, and good part of September. Uh, and then it came to 0 0.4, 0 0.7 per week, which is 20, 25% APY, you know, post liquidity mining. So what happened is that basically, over here, we had a lower liquidity, so the pool size was smaller, and the you know the the, the yield was all coming from the fees. Once the liquidity mining program uh, you know was announced, then a lot of liquidity actually joined Uniswap, and so we got that crazy growth of Uniswap from you know two three hundred million in uh, you know pooled to three billion. And uh, essentially, what what we're seeing here is that 
you know, the yield, the, the yield from fees went down because the pool got so diluted that the fees were, uh, you know, um, really distributed by, by you know, um, across many LPs. Uh, and uh, and all in all, even consider the the, um, the increase in volume that Uniswap experienced, uh, we, we got you know twenty twenty five percent. So kind of to summarize, you know before before the liquidity uh, mining program, we had a smaller pool size, so the fees were more concentrated, less diluted, and we didn't have Uniswap incentive. We were talking 40, 50% APY for the LPs. Once we got the liquidity mining program, the pool got much larger, uh, fees a lot more diluted. Uh, we got the incentives though. And so we got, you know, 20, 25% APY. So this is to say that I think mean, there are two scenarios coming up. Either, you know, uh, the program will stop and, and that's per se is going to stop by, uh, you know, by default. And, and let's assume, you know, the program does, is, it doesn't get renewed. Very likely what's going to happen is that liquidity will, you know, some of the liquidity, some, some already did, but some of the liquidity will kind of flee Uniswap or leave Uniswap. And then, you know, we're kind of going to go back in a sense to a smaller pool size, but then, you know, feel, fees less diluted for the LPs. So, yes, we're not going to have the Uniswap, but I expect the uh, the yield maybe not to go back to 40, 50 percent, consider this is also a function of the market, but maybe, uh, you know, maybe go back to, 2025 at least percent, which is what we're, we're getting today. Or if the liquidity, uh, you know, mining program gets renewed, that probably, you know, some of the liquidity will join back, and then we're going to have the Uniswap, um, the, the Uniswap uh, uh, token reward, and so we're going to kind of stay to this uh, to this level. So. You know, to summarize, I think basically almost it doesn't matter. So if there is no liquidity, um, you know, incentive, then, okay, we're going to have a smaller pool, but then, you know, we're going to capture more fees. If there is the incentive, we'll probably uh, get less fees, but then there is the incentive. So it's it's really a market equilibrium. This is to say that I don't think that just leaving because the, um, you know, incentive is, is done uh, is necessarily a good idea. And in terms of, I, I know that in terms of the governance and the Uniswap team, there is a proposal uh, d- discussed right now to incentivize and to, to prolong the incentives. Obviously, you know, there's a question really, uh, you know, also a bigger question in terms of the strategy of Uniswap, the competition, how to face the competition, how to maintain the liquidity in a way that, you know, we uh, we have the best price and Uniswap keeps uh, attracting a lot of volumes. So that is going to be see. Uh, we're going to see in the next few days what, what happened. But I think that the takeaway is that you know, either way, the, the 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 overall kind of yield of the pool is is more to has more to deal with the overall demand for exchanges at that pool uh, rather than you know the the incentive policies. Even if you know, obviously, you know, in a market where you know Sushi has an incentive, Curve has an incentive, uh, Balancer has an incentive, probably you know Uniswap is a good idea to kind of you know, keep some form of structure around that also, you know, to face the competition. So we'll see what happens. Uh, meanwhile, um, you know, uh, if you want, you can always, you know, use uh, Uniswap ROI to track your liquidity. Uh, you can get, uh, you know, really in-depth analysis of what's what's going on with your uh, liquidity, even in Uniswap and in Curve, uh, get charts, uh, etc. And uh, if you have question thoughts, you can find my details here at the bottom of each, each page uh, to connect with me either on Telegram or on Twitter. So please do if you have any uh, feedback and, and thoughts. And until next time, have a great day, guys. Have a great one. And uh, talk soon. Let me know your feedback. Ciao.